Hey, hi, what's up? My name is Adam McMaster and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've been around here for a while, then you may know that one of my friends is named Miles McKenna and he recently uploaded a YouTube video called Do I Look Like a Girl? Changes After Stopping Testosterone. I specifically was so excited for this video to come out because I stopped testosterone. That's right, I know. Just to fast track through my story to get started, I came out at 13 years old as a FTM transgender. I started testosterone at 16 years old and continued taking testosterone until 21 years old. At 19, I started identifying as non-binary and at 21, I got top surgery. Top surgery honestly alleviated so much of my dysphoria that it didn't even feel necessary to be on testosterone. Anymore. In my own body right now, I might get hated for this. In this moment, I do not feel that I experience dysphoria. That's a big statement. Like, did I just say that I'm a non-dysphoric trans person? Cause like, I'm gonna get so much hate. But like, hear me out, I did everything that I needed to do in my transition and now like, I'm good. Like, I feel good. My body feels like what it's supposed to be. When I look in the mirror at my naked body, I'm like, we're good. I think the only time that I get dysphoric is like when I'm around cis men who are very aggressive and angry about my transition. And to be honest, that's not even really dysphoria. That's just me being scared of cis men that are angry at my transition. So like really, like in my own self, in my own head, I know my gender. And as of right now, my body matches what I think it should look like. I remember genuinely looking in the mirror when I had a chest and being like, this is extremely wrong. And that's why I knew I needed top surgery to alleviate that dysphoria. When I got that top surgery, everything was just like chill. I still identify as non-binary and I identify as FTM and I identify as bi-gender. There's a reason there are many true scums who don't like me and I hope that somebody buys their coffee for them this week. When I started testosterone, I didn't think I was gonna ever stop. Not at least until I was like a senior and they were going to like decrease my testosterone levels gradually. Never, ever, 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 ever thought that I would allow my cycle to come back. And now here we are, a whole new grown person and I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to carry a baby at some point in my life. So good thing I got my cycle back. But that's what I mean, like these things aren't causing me dysphoria anymore. And I don't know if top surgery just alleviated all of that for me and if that's like, you know, not considered not having dysphoria because I, because I transitioned, like, I don't know. Is dysphoria defined as like being dysphoric about the gender I was assigned at birth? Because obviously I'm still dysphoric about being like, Called a girl. But I'm not dysphoric about my body. I don't feel physically dysphoric. I don't feel mentally dysphoric, like in that regard. Like when I go out, people are like, that's a guy and I'm comfortable being viewed that way. And if they're not like, that's a guy, then they're like, that's a trans guy. Nobody ever looks at me and goes, that's a girl. People usually look at me and assume that I'm just a queer body of some sort, which is like super cool with me. Cause that's what I am. Like, I don't care if people think I'm a cis guy or not. Cause like, I'm not a cis guy. And I think that even if I had grown up as a cis guy, I still would have ended up finding this non-binary piece and I guess alleviate any past dysphoria that came with identifying as a cis guy. In this regard, I guess it's just flipped and I'm just not identifying as a cis girl, which would cause me dysphoria, but I'm like, because I'm not doing that. Like I don't experience, I don't have. There's still things today. Like I still have family members that call me by my dead name. I've been out for nearly 10 years. It's 10 years ago that I started socially transition. And I still have family members that a decade later call me my dead name. Of course it's frustrating, but it doesn't cause me dysphoria. I don't know why. It's not my name and I know that they're calling me the wrong name. And I also know why they're calling me the wrong name. And I understand that that used to be my name and it's still just frustrating that they're not calling me by my real name. But like, I'm not dysphoric about my dead name. Like it's just a name that I used to have. It doesn't like match me. And so I changed my name. I know I overthink a lot of things, but the fact that I understand myself in my own brain is all I ever really need. Like I don't actually need the outside world to understand who I am when like I'm this comfortable with who I am. To be honest, I don't really care what people see me as. Like if somebody did see me as a girl, I would just be like, I mean, you're mistaken. I mean, if a cis person gets misgendered, are they expected to go on this like long journey of self-discovery to make sure that they're cis? Are they supposed to like change the way they look and like make things match what people think a cisgender person looks like? Like that's how ridiculous it feels to me when I'm like, oh, okay, somebody thought I was a girl. So I should then feel dysphoric and need to go take hormones and need to go do a bunch of things to my body so that people know that I'm the gender that I already know that I am. Like I already know that I am that. The world's mistakes are not on me. So I'm gonna play Miles' video today and there's a couple parts where I'm going to pause and just talk about some things. There's definitely some things that I wanna add on to what he already said because I've also been off testosterone for a year. I'm not sure how scientifically correct this is, but just in my personal journey, I feel that coming off of testosterone or coming off of any hormone is not something that's often discussed. I don't think that a lot of people know the effects. I don't think a lot of people know what to expect. And I think a lot of trans people feel stuck taking hormones for the rest of their transitions because if they stop, then suddenly 
they they must not be trans anymore or something. But like if you're good and you feel good and you don't want that anymore, then like. But I totally understand too. Obviously, there's people that like need that and still are like, I would be dysphoric without that. And of course, then you need testosterone to continue alleviating your dysphoria. But like, if you don't, does that just make you not who you say you are? Anyway, I'm super happy to be doing this React video, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm already a huge disappointment to my family. Part two. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Miles. Welcome to the Sad Gay Team Series. Something I do here on this channel where you guys ask me real gay questions and I give you real gay answers. This video is less gay, more trans. Either way, my father just does not approve. <laughs> so I've made a bunch of videos about my trans ass. From wanting to start HRT, to being one year on hormones, to last Monday's video about why I stopped hormones, to now today's video about all the changes that I saw after getting off of tea. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> But yeah, the general consensus from people reaching out to me is just that they had no idea that I went off of tea. Which is something I didn't expect. I mean, going into it, I was super scared that I was just gonna like fem it up <laughs> and like not pass. I'm like, these are things that are important to me. I've had people in my life, people just like online, not knowing that I got off of tea or anything was happening with me, literally just telling me like, oh, you look younger or you look so youthful today. I look younger. You can't tell me that this man is younger than this man. You can't tell me that. First of all, this is totally a thing. So I think if I ask any of my friends just off the top of their heads, do they think that I stopped testosterone? I don't think anybody would say yes. Most people in my life would be like, I never knew you stopped. Why? I mean, I still grow facial hair and like I still have a deep voice, obviously. And like, I, there's no real reason to think that I stopped tea. But then yeah, if you do some comparison photos, like I look so much younger right now than I did two, three years ago. I do look more youthful. And I was scared that I was going to look like a girl after stopping tea. Like that was a fear of mine. But in this weird way, I feel like it was less important to me than it was to Miles because I, Miles mentioned that it was really important to him to keep passing. I was at this point in my life where I, not that I didn't want to pass, obviously I want to pass, but I wasn't as distressed by not passing. I more or less saw it as an outward mistake than like an inward mistake, if that makes sense. I think it's from multiple things happening. Obviously, T did a lot with acne for me, but not so much acne, but just like creating more oils. And I, I just had a lot of texture going on with my face that I think really aged me. So immediately with getting off of tea, I mean, my acne just spiked. I had the, the worst, the worst acne, which is something that I've heard a lot of people from getting off of tea, they found. Again, it's not so much tea that gives you acne, it's just your hormones being imbalanced. This is a thing too. So hormones being imbalanced is what causes my acne all the time. I don't actually get acne when I'm consistently on testosterone or when I'm consistently off testosterone. But anytime that there's a hormonal change, we're getting zits. Starting testosterone, I got more acne than I had ever had. And and coming off of testosterone, again, I've had more acne than I've ever had. A lot of this isn't really documented. I didn't have terrible acne ever. As for my face structure, that did not change at all. My jawline, like everything stayed the same, but my face sort of like sunk into itself. Granted, I was just about to hit my two year mark. Something that I've seen from following other people's journeys is that a lot of guys or people that take tea, their face will kind of get like really wide. And then once they hit like two, three years, it kind of really sinks into itself. That's what I noticed with getting off of but tea. But either way, it sunk into itself. I still have a jawline. My acne cleared up. I think all of that combined really just makes me look like a younger person. <laughs> When I was on testosterone, I was always told that my face was really round, and I was told that this is a feminine trait about myself. I was always really insecure that I had a round face. Funny enough, when I got off of testosterone, my face sunk in like this. Obviously, I'm not sitting here with cheekbones that could cut glass, but if you look at an old picture of me when I'm on testosterone versus now, my face sunk in a lot when I stopped taking tea. Still have the same jawline that I did. I never really had a good jawline. But yeah, facial structure, um, more or less just the shape of my face changed, but like, that didn't, if that makes sense. There was a lot that happened with that, but all in all, I mean, like, so happy with all of that. I'm good with all of that. My hair, it got curly, which isn't surprising. Like, getting off of tea is really just kind of reintroducing my body to, like, estrogen being the dominant sex hormone. I know that's something that happens with, like, a lot of pregnant people. Once they're pregnant and, like, there's a lot of estrogen, like, popping off in their body, their hair will get curly, because, like, hormones. But that's something that happened with me and I'm so happy about. I don't know how I just, there's no products in my hair. Like I just, this is just living. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> First of all, there is not a single person in this world who does not want Miles McKenna's hair. You can't tell me that's not true. The boing. The boing boy. I love curly hair. I've always had really weird hair. Like my hair grows up at the back. I have cowlicks everywhere. It's just a mess. Something about going off of tea for me, my hair didn't change much. I think a big thing is that I used to bleach my hair a lot and I used to dye my hair a lot, like a lot of the time that I was on tea. So I don't actually know what my natural hair on tea was like necessarily. 
necessarily. Whereas now I'm rocking the natural. And yeah, like my hair is not, it's definitely not curly. I can see how that would happen. Like it makes sense to me. Like the hormones changing everything. Like that makes sense. It just didn't happen for me. My voice is something also that just did not change. Something else that I've seen just from having like a trans experience. Most cis guys that like you're hanging out their with, their voice started to drop when they were 13. So if you're hanging out with people that are like 19, 20, 21, they've had such a long amount of time to get adjusted to a new voice and like their vocal cords like stretch in ways to like give them a deeper tone. So when you're like, you know, 19, 20, 21, your voice is just getting deep for the first time. I think it makes sense that you kind of have a period of time where you're not really sure how to talk. But definitely my voice hasn't changed from getting off hormones, but I think it has really grown into itself just because I've had more time with this voice. So, I really just wanna mention here, I do feel like my voice changed after getting off of testosterone. I don't think that that's actually scientifically possible, and I think that it could just be something to do with my brain. It's not that testosterone was making my voice deeper, but when I was on testosterone, I was more aware of how deep I was making my voice. Whereas now I'm really natural about it, and I can totally tell that my voice is higher than it used to be. I also don't force my vocal cords to be deeper than they are, like I used to. In a lot of scenarios, people tell me that it makes me sound very flamboyant, and that's fine. But like, the way that I'm talking right now is how my voice actually is. And if you had talked to me three years ago, I would have talked to you like this. And I don't know if you can hear what the difference is, but I purposefully tried to make my voice more bassy so that I appeared to be more masculine, a cisgender man, if you will. Uh, and I accredited testosterone for all of this bassy boominess. But like, that's just so hard and I hate it. But like, that's just so much work to change the way that I talk, to make other people believe the gender that I already know that I am. Like, I don't know, I did weird things. I did weird things. People ask if your period starts up again. I'm not gonna like use different words and be like, ew. I'm just gonna be blunt. Cause we know, we know I'm trans, we know, we know why we're all here right now, right? Yeah, your cycle starts again. One of the things I forgot to talk about in my last video was one of the reasons I wanted to get off of T was because I didn't want to have the surgery to get rid of my uterus. When you're on T for like three, four, five years, like you have to get that shit out. You have to get that shit out. You can't have like a dead organ in your body and like expect to like have a long life expectancy, you know? So I've actually never been medically talked to about this. And it makes total sense because obviously you shouldn't have a dead organ chilling in your body for long periods of time. There's been times where I've gone to the hospital for emergencies and they've gone in and looked at my ovaries and been like, did you know that these are like dead? And I was always like, yeah, don't worry about it. I got it under control. Really, I had no idea. Like I had no idea what that could mean, what that would do. I was just like, the other dead, not getting a period anymore. All I cared about at the time was not getting my period because my period was causing me dysphoria. My period doesn't cause me dysphoria now. My cycle started up as soon as I stopped tea, which I actually didn't know how that would go. I've heard from some people that they completely lose their cycle and they can't get it back. I don't know how common that is, but for me, my cycle fully came back and it doesn't actually cause me any dysphoria. Like, don't get me wrong, it sucks to have your period, but like, I think any cisgender woman would agree that it sucks to have your period. Like, it's not something that's actually causing me gender dysphoria, especially because I'm like, my my body makes periods. <laughs> like, my body has a cycle. My body's doing its thing. This is what my body is. And like, I want to carry a baby one day. So like, if I do want to carry a child in the future, then I obviously need a cycle. How cool is it that my body's capable of doing that? That has nothing to do with my gender. That's just, that's just my body, what my body can do. And I'm working with it. I don't know. I feel like I'm at a completely different level with my period than I used to be. I almost feel like when I went on testosterone and I stopped getting a cycle, I didn't vibe. This is going to sound weird, but I didn't identify with cis men. And I didn't identify with cis woman. Something about my cycle allows me to identify with woman without actually seeing myself as a woman. But I identify with that femininity. And I identify with that like reproduction ability. I like my soft skin. I like my face. I like, I don't know. I don't want to be like a man, man, like a man. I don't want to be that. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm more envy leaning that it doesn't bother me as much right now. And again, that could change in the future. I've accepted that gender is fluid. I've accepted that 10 years down the road, I may feel differently as I did 10 years ago. And as I'm sure I did 10 years before that, because I was like, what too? When you get on tea, there's a thing called fat redistribution. It basically takes all of like the meat <laughs> in like your thighs and like the things that give you curves and it moves it. to places that make you like look more mask. And it's amazing, it's magical. That goes away. <laughs> the positive thing with that is it's only something that like only I would really notice. You don't, you probably didn't notice. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. And, like I don't think I look to other people like not masculine in those ways. I just wanna talk about this. I don't know if you can see what I'm wearing right now. These pants actually used to give me so much dysphoria. Yeah. They're so like, 
don't know. I always wore like very baggy things and I didn't let anybody see my figure. And yeah, when I was on T, I definitely had that body fat redistribution where I looked a lot more just like, which was super chill for me. I loved it. Alleviated that dysphoria for me like crazy. Now getting off of tea, I definitely have filled out into my natural hourglass shape. But in this weird way, like I've been flexing on like boys with hips. And like, have you seen my butt? I don't know if you noticed, but like I had no butt and like there's still not a lot of butt, but like we're not flat people. We got some curves happening. It's kind of a good time. It's kind of fun. I think that now that my chest is gone, I'm like so much freer just to be. Plus like, well, else do you know that has hips like these? I'll just dance now. It helps me on the TikTok dancing videos. Naturally from being on testosterone, like you just, you get a lot of muscle. It's really easy for you to just like gain muscle and just like have muscle and like, oh, did I just lose it? To the point where it was like painful. Like all of a sudden taking groceries from my car to my apartment, like hurt. Like actually physically hurt. Like it's not like, oh, like I can't really do it. Like it hurt. I don't know if it had something to do with like my muscles going from like this to like this in such a short amount of time. Or it's just me really noticing like how much I couldn't lift. But I mean, I, it just, you just lose your muscle. So I actually got so insecure about this and I didn't even think about the fact that it was about testosterone. Obviously being on testosterone for five years, I gained muscle. Whenever I chose to work out, that muscle grew like this. I could do five push-ups when I was on T and I'd wake up being like, ooh, there's some growth. <laughs> Holding this laptop up right now is hurting my arm. Just for context, you lose your muscle like crazy. I didn't realize that this was actually a thing for other people. This was the point that made me want to make this video the most. I thought that I was weak. I thought that this was happening to my body because I wasn't being active enough and that I'm a pretty active person. I'm constantly doing things and I actually don't mind exercising. So like, it's not really an issue. But all of a sudden I like couldn't lift anything. Just lifting bins, lifting boxes, carrying groceries up the stairs is so tedious now. And a lot of people always thought that I was over exaggerating or that I was just super, super weak. So I'm really glad that Miles brought this up because it's definitely something that happens like 155,000%. I'm not talking like you're gonna go back to the muscle that you had before starting tea. I'm talking like your body can't lift like a bag of milk. Most of you are American and you're not gonna know what a bag of milk is. Imagine not being able to pick up your cat without being in pain. That's it. Another thing that I feel like kind of relates to that, maybe not really, uh, what didn't change is the amount that I sweat. So before I got on testosterone, I actually had already hit a female puberty for multiple years. And I was never a sweaty person. I didn't have a very strong smell. When I started tea, whoo, that changed a lot. I get sweaty. I got to shower all the time. And that did not stop when I stopped tea. Also like I'm 22 now. So like I'm sure in general, 22 year olds get sweatier than like 15 year olds. But like, do they? I don't know. Anyway, I'm still real sweaty. Hair growth. So for me, I just don't. <laughs> so my beard, I don't even know if you can call it that. What happened when I was on T was I got like patches where like thick hair grows. Not like very long, but it is very dark and thick. It's just patchy. That still grows. Every like two days I have to shave. I don't let it grow out because it just doesn't make sense. It's like, if it was all here, like that's fine. It's literally here. Like these two places, that's where it grows, which just like doesn't make sense. And also like a little on my neck, but again, it's patchy. So it just doesn't look good. Like I felt really good with it when I was like four months on T cause I was like, I was all kumbaya with like figuring out I'm trans. So I was like, yeah, any facial hair, but like now, I mean, I just shave it constantly. With getting off of T, it's not like my hair doesn't grow anymore. It still does. There's just no opportunity for like any more to come in. Like if I was still on T, then like new hair follicles would like come in and like my beard would have a chance to not be patchy. I took away testosterone. So there's not really any opportunity for that to happen. So I'm also on team. I don't know if you could call this a beard or not. Like if I even come up like, that's how much facial hair I grow. And that's about all the facial hair I grow. I keep it trimmed down because if I let it grow, it just looks awful. And yeah, this hair doesn't stop growing. There's just no opportunity for like more hair to come in. But I was always good with having this amount of facial hair. This amount of facial hair actually made me feel really euphoric about everything, so. And emotions. You can cry. Imagine just like always crying. Like you just, you grow up and when you're sad, like you cry. If something, if any, you just, you're crying. All of a sudden, that is just gone. <laughs> it's more deep than you think. It's not like from being on T. I just like, oh, I just can't cry. You have to find then other ways to cope with life where you used to cry to do that. Now you like learn other skills and ways to deal. Like a lot of trans masculine people in place of crying comes extreme frustration. Just like, 
I, I would say anger, but just like it's so easy to just get like upset and like mad. I'd say I say again, like I think when I was like six months on T, like oh I just couldn't cry and I was angry, <laughs> like just like classic, like just not knowing how to like get this frustration out. That dissipated for me. It's not like I was just walking around angry all the time, but there was like so many instances where you know instead of crying, I was like upset and like mad which just it wasn't typically in my nature <laughs> to be like that getting off of tea really changed that but it was a struggle then with now having so much ability to cry <laughs> like an ungodly amount and it was really difficult to like navigate my emotions i think like my first five months of getting off of tea because any little thing would just set me off and i would just just cry <laughs> again much like getting on tea and having to deal with like deep emotions in one way getting off of tea i had to deal with having deep emotions in another way. So I probably put that in like a negative experience from getting off of tea. Like how much you have to deal with your emotions fluctuating is just a lot. I want to talk about this. Mostly just because I want to emphasize that everybody's journey is different. And I know that for most people, this whole crying thing is a really legitimate thing. I couldn't even count on my hand how many trans guys I know that are like, I can't cry since I've been on TV. For me, I was actually always really bad at taking my testosterone regularly. So that obviously plays a role in it. I don't think that there was a single year where I took my shot every week without fail. Maybe, maybe that's common. I don't know, but I felt like a failure for it. And I don't know if it's because of that or not, but when I was on T, I didn't really have any issues crying. I don't feel like my emotions actually changed or that the way that I dealt with things actually changed. I feel like I was actually more masculine before I started testosterone, if anything. Not like physically, obviously, but like in my head, like I was more like, I'm not gonna cry, boys don't cry. Hmm. But yeah, when I got off of tea, like I would say it was the same thing. I didn't notice a whole lot of changes in my emotions. Now, I'm also diagnosed with anxiety, depression, PTSD, OCD, a few things that can definitely change my ability to regulate my emotions. And so that could have a lot to do with it too. I've spent years in therapy, years and years doing just different programs and learning how to handle my emotions, learning how to express myself like that. So even when I was like on testosterone, you know, even if I was crying less, I didn't feel that anger frustration that a lot of people talk about when they start teeth. And I didn't feel the intense like, oh my gosh, I have to cry every single day uh, when I stop taking tea either. I just cry all the time. I cry like three times a week. And that like, it's always been that way. Somebody also told me when I was younger that they let themselves at least tear up every single day and that they find that it's really healthy. And I don't know why that always stuck with me, but I really liked that idea of just allowing your body to cleanse itself that way. I was never, I never felt like crying was difficult. Even when I got like super mad when I was on tea, like I would just cry. <laughs> a big cry baby I am. It's just a lot. But just like getting on tea, it levels out. I probably missed a few things, but those were all the main ones for me. I'm super happy I got on tea. I'm super happy that I got off Tea. I'm super happy with who I am and where I am today. I mean, it's a grab bag. I kind of went into it thinking I was gonna have a terrible experience. The only thing I knew is just like medically, like I could not be on tea for whatever reason. I was just having issues. So I was really scared, but I'm super happy with everything that's happened. So I guess the moral of this whole story is something that kind of goes back to one of my gender therapists and what they said. Everyone is different and everyone's transitions are different. Some people want a little of this, some people want a little of that. Some people want this, but they don't want that. That's like fine. <laughs> do what is safe for you. Do what is healthy for you. Do what you want to do. If you're thinking that you want to transition medically, a great place to start is looking up your local LGBTQ plus center. A lot of them either have their own gender therapy set up or they can get you connected with gender therapists in your area. Get connected with professionals. Talk to people about it. I made an entire video last year about LGBT centers. Specifically getting connected with them when you're like in middle America. Thank you for watching my TED talk. Okay. So the last thing that I want to say in response is that I do not regret being on testosterone at all. I would I don't know where I would be if I didn't take testosterone. If I didn't have this right now, if I didn't have this voice right now, like then I would have dysphoria. Going on to tea was exactly what I needed when I needed it, and going off of tea was also exactly what I needed when I needed it. I don't even know, maybe five years down the road, I'm gonna be like, yo, I really want some of that tea juice. And like, if it's actually causing me medical dysphoria, then I will go through and pursue that. As long as it's not, there's not really a need for me to be on tea. Everyone's transition is different. I am valid, you are valid. I think a big thing about transitioning is just that like, when you're a young trans kid, you just want the world to accept that you're the gender you know you are. And you're gonna do literally anything to get there. There's a very like unspoken checklist when somebody comes out as trans. Like when somebody comes out as a trans guy, there's a lot of pressure. Change your name, cut your hair, start T, get top surgery. Like, and then you gotta start thinking about bottom surgery. Plus you gotta get a hysterectomy. Plus you gotta like, you don't have to want all of those things to feel comfortable. Just because you don't necessarily want all of those things 
doesn't mean that you're not trans. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Think of your transition like a store. You're walking into a store and it's got all the same style of clothing. Okay, transitioning is like that. So you can go into the store, go into the trans store, and there's all these different things you can do and they're all being marketed to you and you have to pick and choose out of that entire store what you wanna get. Of course, if you're in love with everything in the store, you can buy one of everything and live that life. But if there's just a few pieces that you really like and that's all you wanna buy, does that mean that like, you're not a fan of that store. Like it doesn't mean you're not trans. It just means that like you didn't need the whole thing. Everyone is everywhere. People are different. This is, we're figuring this out. Plus like this, the whole idea of like gender fluidity and stuff is not new. There's historical research dating back to, I don't even know when. But even if there wasn't, I know the way that I feel and I'm just going to live my life the way that I feel it should be lived. I don't need to follow anybody else's trans rules book. I just am who I am and I wouldn't want it any other way. I live a fun life. If you want to keep watching more of it, please feel free to subscribe to my channel it would help me and my channel out a lot Ugh, thank you for watching this video thanks to miles for making that video originally the homie i can't wait for the borders to open back up so i can go and see it. i miss my friends and i miss where i feel at home and that's what's made this pandemic really hard for me but like we got the internet where we can stay in touch so that's what we're doing i hope that you enjoyed this video please like comment share favorite subscribe and all of that jazz and i will check you later